Hi guys, my name is Ellie, welcome to my channel, and today we're doing a palette focus, but I'm using two. These are the Archeo and Paleo palettes from Crayon Cosmetics. I just, I want to use them together. I think that was one of my intents when I bought it because this one, this lovely beast, is half matte and half gorgeous shimmer. And it's a good variety of mattes that I think will help me use a little bit more of this lovely beach, who only has two mattes, but has all this variety and warm and, you know, cool and deep and light. And I have, I have a plan, but I need to get it on my face. And it requires both of them. I am also, um, mainly I'm using these because I've just been very... <sighs> With panning, every once in a while you hit a point where you just want to use other stuff. And I haven't even really been wearing makeup that often because I've been adjusting to my new job, which involves leaving the house at a time that I had previously just been barely waking up. And I'm getting to where I'm getting to work on time more consistently. And I, I wasn't like super late, but we're talking like maybe five minutes behind when I should have been there which the so far the work is pretty flexible that I can just stay an extra five minutes, but I don't want to consistently be five minutes late. So I'm getting better at being on time. And then once we get there, we'll get to getting up in time to actually do my makeup before leaving and getting there on time. But I've just, I've been thinking about how I'm not using my makeup as much and how I'm not, since I'm trying to pan stuff, that's not good for that. But I'm also seeing the rest of my collection when I do other tasks or projects or try to dupe colors and stuff. And I'm just so tempted to use more of my stuff. And Cleanock Cosmetics has been at the, the front of my brain a lot because they're releasing a new collection. I ordered the Dreamweaver bundle. So we're waiting on that to come in the mail, which they have a delay because they are a small little, you know lady and lady shop that hand make everything so their release versus receiving has a bit of a, a time delay because I have to you know make everything for all the orders and they're starting to be more popular so that's fantastic I'm very excited for that to come in the mail when they get my order out but they've also been um, showing sneak peeks of their new collection called the stained glass collection which I'm fucking excited for so far, we've seen a bunch of multi-chrome pressed shadows, um, a, like, iridescent see-through makeup bag, which I'm probably going to get. I'm not that big on makeup bags, but it's really pretty, and I think I would get some good use out of it uh, for when I do little travels and trips. I'm, I have the, atten the intent to travel a little bit more, and they're also showing some iridescent highlighters, so they have... Um, some duochrome highlighters that are just very translucent sheer bases with these strong flashes of color which are on my list to buy once I've finished panning my uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills Moonchild glow kit which again I need to get more use out of so I can kill it and I just I'm very excited I've been thinking about them and I'm so excited for these products in their formula because they have a really good formula and then I looked at their duochrome palettes that I have uh, last week when I was doing a different video and I just I just want to touch them I just want to use them I I miss my palettes so I thought I would do a little look using these two palettes because I did feel like the color stories went really well together and they were something I intended to use as like sister palettes when I got them and it kind of got lost. I, I did one month one palettes on them, I did little focuses, but I just didn't really give them as much love as I really want to. So I thought we would do one of those today. Um, I've just been putting down my eyeshadow primer and a beige shade. Now we're going to put on a little satiny shimmer shade for my brow bone highlight and then we can actually get into using the products I want to use. I also thought if I can do it without getting weird, I want to talk about blood donation. That might seem a little weird to you, and that's fine. I 
I try to donate blood pretty regularly. I also can get a little weird when I think too much about my veins and that I have blood and it it's not good. It makes my skin crawl, it makes me feel weird, I don't like it, but it's not a consistent thing, it just depends on the day and how much I'm thinking about it and how thinking about it is making me feel, so if we can get through this without me getting all like, thinking too much about my veins and my blood, then it'll be great. So, I'm going to open up the palettes in front of me, and I'm probably not going to be holding them up as much just because working from two palettes and showing each thing, I'm going to just try to show you the product on the brush and, you know, on the face. And then we can go from there. That's my plan. It's not the best plan, but it's my plan. I want to start with Monolith in the crease. This is from the Arkeo palette. Uh, it is very pigmented, like rosy mauve shade, and I'm hoping that this Morphe brush, which has been really good at diffusing color, will allow me to do a light layer. This is one of the shadows that really builds on itself very quickly and very opaquely, so you have to use a little bit of tact to shear it out into like this nice little soft moment, which is, is also really good because it means if you really want it to be kapow, you can really get all of that out of it. But for a little rosy blush moment, we gotta be careful. So I donated blood yesterday, and it did not go the greatest. I thought, hopefully I could tell you about some of my blood donation experiences and what they have taught me so you guys can do good donations that don't have all the same issues that I sometimes end up having. Um... I started donating in high school, because at least in the U.S. we do a lot of blood drives and they often go around to high schools and colleges, because you do have a lot of um, generally healthy, free people who will pop in and donate blood for the free food and the t-shirt, because you normally get a t-shirt for having donated, because you know, blood drives. Do, do, do. See, now I'm just building a little too much, but we're just gonna deal with it because I like to build. So I started in high school, and the first time I donated, I was real excited because it's one of those things where certain ages can and certain ages can't, so you had to get old enough to donate at the school drive and you got to get out of class. It was, it was really cool, and it was luckily one of those things that was promoted as cool because blood donation is really important it if you can you really really should it's very very helpful for anybody in need um, for keeping the hospitals and the different surgery areas running properly and then so yeah we they do a lot trying to promote the the mentality that it's like a cool popular thing to do and it really is it's it's fun to do as a group and to feel good about helping out and if you have a good experience it's not anything that really impacts you beyond a day or two my first experience was not great i have never given before um the nurses at blood drives are a little bit more spread thin than other places because they're trying to do a bunch of people as fast as they can, get them in and out, and get as much blood to the different hospitals as they can during their drive. And I had never done it before. So I showed up. Um, I had a rash in one elbow, which probably would have been fine, but they're very particular about what is and isn't going on with your flesh. Um, so it was most likely just dry skin or something, but she didn't want to use that arm, so she ended up using my right arm, which 
they tend to try and go with your non-dominant hand, which is why I almost always give with my lefty. But she was attempting the other one, so she tried for this one. Um, and got the, the needle in. That was when I realized I don't like watching the needle go in. I do not. I don't like seeing that it's in. Luckily, they'll, they'll put it in. They'll put, like, a little gauze pad on top so you can't see the sight that it's just sticking into your flesh. Um, but I was doing all right. I already knew that I wasn't the best about blood, um, but that it was also a day-by-day -day thing. I'm using Fossil from the Paleo palette to deepen my crease. This is another one you want to be careful with, because it's got, it's got a lot. Tap off all the excess. These two do pair very well together. I think having this one to play with the other one helps a lot because there isn't a really dark matte in the Archeo palette. But that together makes such a lovely little look. So they put the needle in. I was doing all right. I was feeling good. I hadn't started having some of the other problems that we will get to in a little bit. And the nurse, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't lightheaded, I wasn't having any issues, I wasn't freaking out, so she kind of like wandered away to um, check in on some other people, which they will do. If you're doing fine, they don't stand next to you and watch you the whole time. They're generally trying to do multiple patients at the same time. Um, so they will just kind of abandon you and just check back in when they can on your progress and how your blood's flowing and where the bag is and that, you know, nothing's wrong. She... It might not have been her fault. She might not have been able to do anything even if she was there, but the needle ended up slipping out of my vein a little bit um, without them doing, like when they take the needle out properly, they do a lot of pressure to make sure that you don't bleed any more into the surrounding tissue. She wasn't there. She was somewhere else and I didn't know what to look for. So I ended up um, bleeding into my elbow a little bit. So I ended up having this really big, nasty, bruise, a hematoma, from not having the needle removed properly because it slipped out. Uh, it also meant that my donation wasn't uh, full, so it wasn't usable. So that was fun. Um, it did not help the way I feel about blood and veins, knowing that the needle can sl like slide slightly out and I can just have this huge gross, to me, like gnarly bruise. It was it was big. And then since she didn't want to use my other arm, which they would have potentially been able to try again for the other arm if I hadn't had the skin thing that she didn't like. So my first donation was a fail. Um but I really wanted to be productive and helpful, so I continued to try. I had better experiences on the next blood drive, and then at college, I got pretty good at it to the point that I could hop in between classes, donate blood, you know, get my little pressure wrapping when they do the when they take the needle out, and, um, one of the things they tell you not to do is to exercise. They tell you to keep it really light for the next day or two. No heavy lifting, no strenuous exercise. Um, you have to eat a little more than normal to start regating the calories that your body is going to use to remake that blood. But that was fine. It was fine. And then... Doo -doo -doo, I want to use... To use trench. We'll use... No, that wasn't what I wanted to use. But it's on this brush, so I can't use this brush. I wanted to use something else. I wanted to try and use... Maybe I will use it. We'll see. We'll see. I want to start with Archaea, which is... You can't see. It's like a, like a mossy green from the Paleo palette. I'll put it on my lid. But yeah, they tell you not to donate blood 
and then go do anything too stressful because it could it could mess with the healing of your now arm wound it could do all sorts of things so you kind of have an, a reason to just keep it chill for the day you get to eat a little bit more you get to feel good about having helped out yeah I think I will use the other one too so I was doing great and then I tried one day when I had not slept well. I don't remember if I'd eaten very much that morning either, but I had gotten really confident in my abilities to give blood and not have a bad reaction. Because I hadn't had a bad physical reaction. I'd had just, you know, the needle issue, which was not, like, that's not a big deal. I donated blood. I don't even think I was feeling bad at the time that I was donating, but I was feeling bad later because I went to go visit my sister at work because she worked at a bookstore. I'm now going to take trench on that brush and put it on the outer edge. I went to go visit my sister afterwards because she was in the area that I was donating in because after, you know, if you're not going to drives or anything, you can go to blood donation centers. They have ones for like the Red Cross. I prefer... Uh, Mississippi River Valley Blood Donation something. They have a complicated name. I will try to um, put a link to their site in the description if I remember. Um, I just like, I like their setup a little better. They have better stuff in my opinion. So I, I think I was still going to the Red Cross. And the Red Cross, in my opinion, doesn't do as much, like, checking that you're all right they kind of want to get you in and out whereas mississippi river valley blood people uh they have like a little relaxing center um right outside their donation like the physical clean site donation where it's really just kind of like a little kitchen pantry with a bunch of snacks and like a fridge full of juice and they basically say sit here eat whatever you want until you're feeling good and then you can leave Whereas the Red Cross is kind of like, here's a cookie and a juice box, get out. At least, in my opinion. Some people probably had better locations. I now want to take crystalline on my inner third and then start to blend all these three together. Because I feel like Archaea got lost a little bit. Um, these three, Archaea, Trench, and Crystalline, are all from the Paleo palette. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. So I I want to say it was the Red Cross that I was at. I donated. I got out. I went to see my sister at work because I was like, well, I'll get like a little something at the cafe. It'll be a nice little treat for having donated. And I blacked out. I got to her cafe in the bookstore because she was in the cafe in the bookstore. And I woke up on the floor so then because I guess I either hadn't had enough to eat or I wasn't hadn't gotten enough sleep some combination of that had really fucked me up and so I passed out she ended up driving me home I left my car there we had to come back from my car later I got home and I took like a six hour nap because uh, that was a bad physical reaction to donating blood and a lot of it was probably my prep work so that's when I realized that I am not as good at it as I thought I was. I do need to pay more attention to the precautions. And so I started making sure that I got enough sleep beforehand, trying to make sure I'd had enough to eat in the time around it, like making an effort to not do that again, because I had never blacked out before. I had never passed out or fainted. And that was really weird and kind of scary. So... I was doing better, I was feeling more confident, I was like, I got this down, as long as I eat and sleep, we're fine. And then there was another day that I donated, because I was, I want to keep donating, that is like the end goal of this, is I want to keep donating and having a positive impact on people, and I feel like maybe I can blend that more, maybe, what's with it? And so, I'm always trying to find a way to fix whatever bad issue I've had and make it something that I'm confident going back to donate more with. So, I was feeling good. I tried again 
uh, I think next time I was available because they have a, a time limit that you have to wait before you can donate again so your body can remake your blood and you can have enough to feel safe donating your excess. I guess it's not excess. Healthy enough to donate some and then still make more and not die is a better explanation. I really like this combination of colors. And I like it next to the rosiness. So I was like, I'll try it again. I got this down. So I made sure I slept because that was, I think, one of those times that I was really messing with my sleep schedule and, you know, trying a bunch of different stuff. And that was why I hadn't slept as much before donating the other time. So I was like, I got a plan. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And then I, um, I did all right at the donation. I think that's when I was still going to the Red Cross. I felt a little lightheaded and they did the thing where they flip the chair so that your, your blood can get to your head um, and you can calm down. They let me sit a little longer and recover what I was doing. I'm going to take a little bit of fossil on this pointed brush and kind of darken up this. And then we might go in with trench on the lower lash line. So, I, I, I did better during the donation. I felt the badness at the donation as opposed to later. And then I was hanging out at home later that night. And I guess I hadn't done enough follow-up eating because you do have to eat throughout the day afterwards um, to maintain that ability to recover your blood and keep enough fuel in you that you don't have issues. Uh, I apparently didn't do that. We were watching a horror movie, which is a very good horror movie if you haven't seen it. It's called Telltale. And it's about a guy who gets a, a heart transplant, and then the heart starts reacting around the people that were that murdered the person who previously had the heart. And so it starts like making him act out and kill people. And he has to figure out why his heart's doing this, and they don't know why this random guy is hunting down these people because he has no um, relation that they can find to kill them. And there's a scene at the end that's... It's done really well, but it is very upsetting. Um, so I got physically uncomfortable. I bolted out of the room during that scene, got to my kitchen, kind of like, do I feel better? And then I hit the ground. <laughs> um, I didn't pass out at that moment. I kind of got my breathing back, got my blood going, and then I went to sit down because my somebody had seen me and so they were trying to keep track of me. And I went to sit down and then I passed out. Which then, I ate a sandwich, I went back in, got the the last little bit of the movie, um, and like a recap from my friend. Uh, yeah, so that's when we learned that I have to eat throughout the day as well. And then I took a little break from donating because I was having issues finding, you know, what was going on. I hadn't thought about it enough. Um, I am going to take a little bit of trench on my lower lash line with this flat smudger brush. And so, more recently, over the last couple years, I have wanted to try again. I'm heavier than I was, so I have less of an issue with, um, you know, blood sugar and issues like that, because I am eating more than I was then, because, you know, I'm fatter. And I was working out a lot more strenuously back then, so I didn't have as much available body fat to deal with certain things. So I... I'm also aware that there's the option that I'll pass out, so I don't drive myself. I generally either go with somebody else who's donating or somebody who drives me who's willing to sit while I donate, which is a good adjustment. And then yesterday, had another not-so-great reaction. I, I was doing great. I remembered to get enough sleep the night before. I ate a breakfast, which I haven't been doing lately, so that was important to get that breakfast in for me. Um, and I had brought water and I was drinking a, what I felt like was a good amount of water. I did fantastic on the iron test. The blood pressure was 120 over 80. I was perfect, ready to go. 
I know by now that I don't like watching the needle go in or really thinking too much about the needle being in my arm. So I wasn't focusing on that. I was just playing on my phone. Um, and I started to get a little lightheaded. I was like, maybe it's not a thing. Maybe it's fine. And then it got worse. <laughs> and of course, the nurses are going back and forth. I'd been chatty and friendly and like, I didn't give any of the signs of being a potential problem. I am going to take Terrain from the Archaeo palette on my inner corner. I feel like I meant to use more of the Archaeo palette in this look, and it ended up really, really paleo heavy, but pretty. We'll have to do more later. We'll have to, like, mix and match a whole lot. Because that's a gorgeous little shade. Um, and so it went from, you know, like, a little woozy, a little lightheaded, because that just happens sometimes as your blood sugar fluctuates. Um, I know that's something that my body does. And normally if I just kind of breathe and keep still, it'll balance back out. I don't need to panic, because panicking will make it worse. And then my vision started to have a little bit of stars. My hearing started to be slightly a little fuzzy, which... <laughs> And the nurses were dealing with somebody else. One of them was actively putting a line into somebody else. So I had to be like, I had my hand up and nobody saw me because I'm a dork who puts my hand up when I want to get somebody's attention. But I want to be like, hi, somebody help me. So I put my hand up and nobody was looking over and I was like, I'm feeling lightheaded. <laughs> and so then they look over and see how pale I am, which I'm already pretty pale. So when I get pale, I get white. Um, which is one of those signs they'll notice that you're not getting enough blood. So then she called another nurse over because she was like actively had her hands on a needle in somebody else. Uh, she came over, she gave me um, an ice pack on my neck and the back of my neck. She had me coughing, she elevated my feet, had me kicking my feet, um, gave me some juice to like sip on so I could get my blood sugar back up. And I had like a tiny amount left to donate to get a full donation and they, they let me finish out because I was conscious and still talking. And then they made sure I sat in the chair a while and felt better. And they kind of kept an eye on me as I was, because I donated. And then I was watching my niece while my sister donated herself. So we could like tag team who watched the baby. Um, so yeah, then I was, I did have a lot of time to sit down and recover and have more snacks in the recovery area. And I didn't black out, which is great. Because <laughs> blacking out is not fun. So. I've had several problems. I am still attempting to donate blood because I can. I don't technically have any medical issues or mental health issues, like a phobia about needles and blood, like I don't like it, but it's not like a traumatic stop me from having an all right day type thing. And I have a good type of blood to donate. I am uh, O positive, so I'm really close to universal donor. I'm very interchangeable. And it's good. It's good to be able to donate. And then we, yeah, so then my sister drove us home. We went out to lunch, so I got a nice big meal after it. And I kept a good eye on my water and food intake for the rest of the day. No other issues. Other than just, like, my arm hurts sometimes because it's healing a wound. What? There's a cat that's not my cat in my yard. Get out. I don't like the neighborhood cats being in my yard because they bully my cat, who's also in my yard. I don't like them. Anyway, so things to keep in mind when donating to have a good experience. Get enough sleep. It is very important to get enough sleep when you're doing this. Eat more than you normally would before and after the donation. Um, drink a lot of water. A big part of remaking that blood is hydration. So I don't know what part yesterday, if it was that I, you know, had a, a breakfast that was not as big as breakfast in the past. I had, I had toast with uh, cookie butter on it, which is delicious if you haven't done that yet. Um, but I maybe should have had two slices or something else. Like, I could have potentially had more there. And maybe if I'd gotten up a little earlier than I had, I would have had more time to get more water into my system and have a better reaction. So, sleeping, eating more before and after than you normally would because you're, you're going to lose um, vital nutrients <laughs> in your blood. And water. Drink a lot of water. Even if you normally do, drink a lot of water. The other thing you can do is if you have an issue with iron, make sure you're eating um, iron-rich foods before and after your donation. 
So normally I will go in and I will either make sure I'm eating something with a lot of spinach or a red meat the day before to make sure that my iron is up to where it needs to be because as a lady, our iron tends to be low anyway and you have to make sure that it's high enough to donate. And that's one of the big ways that women are failed out of donating is not being um, iron sufficient. The other thing is making sure you have enough calories. Uh, the nurse told my sister, because we were talking about it and how it factors into our dieting and exercise plans, you know, you're not supposed to work out really, you know, after donating or honestly for the next day either. Uh, nothing really strenuous, which means no real serious workouts and how you kind of factor that in. They said it takes about 600 calories to replace that blood for your body to make it again uh, on top of the liquids that you need to keep in, in your rotation. So yeah, you need to at least have extra calories available to make that blood. And what else? Make sure you're going with a buddy if you have any type of issues because I very well might have had to call somebody to come get me just because it, I would have been nervous that if I was feeling lightheaded during, I might have had an issue while driving home and caused a car accident, things like that. So go with a buddy. Honestly, it's more fun with a buddy because you both, you and somebody else are both then, that's two donations instead of just one who might not, the other friend might not have gone on their own. And you can go out to lunch afterwards and kind of celebrate and feel good about yourself. Yeah. So sleep, eat, drink, and take care of yourself because it is something that it, you're taking stuff out of your body. It's, it's going to react very differently depending on who it is. And it's good to make sure you have a plan. I'm going to go finish up the rest of my makeup look and I'll be back to show you what it looks like. Hopefully this was helpful. We have a finished look. I'm not sure the lipstick is what I'm going to stick with, but it's what's on my face right now. I really like how the eye look turned out. I think it's very warm, but spring. I associate greens and blues and purples with spring. And technically, we have started spring. And it kind of feels like it. So, I like it. I like it a lot. I really do want to play with using these two palettes together more. I feel like they do make some very lovely color options. <sighs> They're so pretty. And I really love the formula. The formula's fantastic. But right now this has scratched my itch for playing with Kleana for the week. And I have to go finish up because we're going to go to an estate sale that is also a book sale. It's a lot of fun. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this will help you uh, make good choices when you do attempt to donate blood. And if you can, I highly suggest doing it. It helps out a lot. And honestly, if you do it properly, you have minimal impact. Because, like, today I feel fine. There's no issues, no lightheadedness, nothing at all. I just have a little elbow spot to heal up, which, honestly, after the first day, it's kind of closed. And it's just going to be waiting for the skin to close entirely. Because it's, it's, it's not going to, like, reopen and bleed everywhere. It's just... It's a little spot that I gotta keep in mind not to poke it. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Uh, let me know if you're also, like, stalking Kleana, uh, releases and how quickly you want me to get up stuff when I do receive the items. Because I try to play with them right away because I'm excited, but I also don't necessarily push it to the front of editing. Because I'm my editing process is not always the same chronology that I film in. So that will be helpful to know what priority they are for you guys. I love them, so if you love them. Oh, and I'm wearing some of the Moonchild Glow Kit in an attempt to pan it and make room for more highlighters from them.